But background information. The the CSR fault and solar waste ordinance number 2018-041 was adopted in October 23, 2018. Each resident is required to have a waste collection service to have an approved CSR fault and vendor. Vendor contract directly with residents and vendors are charged an infrastructure maintenance fee of 5% of gross receipts. Background information, penalties. There are some penalties that are residents that, that are not in compliance with the same for each offense. The, the milestones on, on the program. Uh, the first quarter was uh, for the last two months in um, uh, 2018. It started in November and uh, December 2018. The second um, uh, uh, milestone was the first quarter report for 2019, January to March, and then yeah. April to June. On the, the audience provided a grace period for all residents to contract with sanitation vendors after February 2019. Going forward, we will we'll be presenting to you the third quarter, quarter recommendation as we receive from the providers and the residents that have uh, contracted with, with vendors for the, market, for the third quarter of 2019. I will follow up with the last quarter of 2020. The implementation and numbers. Originally, in November to December 2018, we had a compliance of about 54.4%. During this, the first uh, quarter of 2019, January to March, we received an increase of 2.3%, uh, adding up to a 56.7%. On the second quarter of 2019, we received the highest increase of 4% and given us a total of 60.6% compliance for the CEDA sample. The implementation of numbers for the districts. Um, as you can see, this is one to seven. We have different, different percentages where we currently are with uh, compliance on sanitation services. It goes from a um, minimum of 51.49% to up to 67.6% compliance. The infrastructure fees received to date, uh, for residential, a total of $162,651.71, and for commercial services, $76,374.91, as the total from the quarter, from the fourth quarter of 2018 and the first and second quarter for 2019. Responses from residents. Um, the non-compliance was mailed out in August 19, 2019. Uh, we have provided 20 days uh, grace period for them to comply with sanitation services. An estimated amount of 14,000 uh, letters were mailed out, and out of those, uh, we received uh, uh, about 280 mail mailings received, 1,526 uh, emails received, walk-ins 370, uh, a good number of uh, calls to answer, over 400 calls, and we have received uh, proof of services over 2,000. Issues notice uh, and lessons learned. The main issue that we encountered on this uh, exercise that it, it was that most of the haulers database was not accurate. Uh, we are currently working with all of them, and we're going to be meeting in the subsequent days with each of them to correct their databases and ensure that we have a solid database for the CSR Fulton as well as their databases. A good number of residents doing business with TRR, TNR, it was a new company that some, somehow the residents were not aware of the uh, company being already uh, a valid company uh, doing business for the city of South Fulton. We're going to correct that item as well and we're going to ensure that the company has uh, fully records for us and being in compliance with its uh, ordinance. 
We also find out that there's a, a good number of bacon lions that are uh, uh, the, the letters were mailed out. Um, some residents have reported that their, their lots are vacant as well, and significant number of addresses that fall under the HOAs, which the residents are really paying their dues today. What we learned from them, uh, more residents sign up for, uh, after receiving the letter. Some residents see operations of smart miles as an, a duplication of efforts. Uh, some residents were in favor of the ordinance and some residents requested an amendment to the ordinance. What we heard is uh, we heard different things, but those are the mo most common items that we receive from our residents. I take my trash to work. I'm a senior and I should be exempt. It's a, va a vacant property. Uh, I'm sick, can pull trash uh, for long distance. Uh, I have issues with the ADA. I'm on a fixed income. I can pull my trash because uh, the buffer is from my house to the curb is over uh, 500 feet. I take my trash to my files. I recycle all my trash. So different kind of uh, questions from all of our residents in which uh, we are to consider if the uh, council wants to do some kind of amendment to the uh, ordinance based on what we heard from our procedures. Next steps, recommendations. As stated before, we're gonna meet with vendors to share issues and lessons learned. Uh, we're gonna update the database and GIS maps to reflect new information. Provide findings to code enforcement for action. Consider amending ordinance to address concerns voice, include some exceptions. Procurement options, uh, well let's maintain the ordinance, ordinance as, as it, it states the other one will be revised ordinance to change the sanitation services model. Revise the ordinance to change the sanitation service model to provide for citywide sanitation collection by a single vendor. With that, uh, it's, that's a brief summary of what we heard on after the mailing of the letter, and I'll be glad to respond to any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Valens. Wayne Lamb, Councilor Wilmer Willis. So Mr. Well, I'm not a fan of this current model, um, and I know we had to uh, move to a model quickly so that we can be in compliance with the state law. Uh, however, uh, this model, at the end of the day, we only have 35,000, approximately 35,000 residents that is going to require sanitation. So that's not a lot of sanitation residents. And so I uh, do have in progress and have had a progress for since December the single model ordinance to bring back. Um, I want to go through it again with the attorney and um, residents are asking that we do uh, something to lower the cost of sanitation and also uh, negotiate so that we can offer senior discounts. and. Uh, we also need to be able to uh, put in the RFP a response on what would happen if we have seniors who can't get their trash to the curb. Uh, I, I do understand that we are doing well compensation-wise with this model, but it's not an overall benefit to most residents in this city. And so my question to you is, with the single model, um, if you put the uh, bring the ordinance back and require a person to put the single model back out for RFP uh, and we go to the single model or zone route, uh, single model using zones, uh, will it be a cost impact on the city? With, with regards to uh, bringing to uh, a new model or a single provider to CSR for it, it is feasible to do that. It will be upon uh, us receiving directions from the council, and we definitely can act on that. We have a draft document that, that can address your concerns, and it will be based on an invitation to bid, which will reflect the lowest cost from the provider into the seven districts of uh, the, the city of South Fulton. With regards to the cost impact to the city, 
it will not be, uh, there will, I don't believe it will be an impact to the city because it will be a similar uh, procedure that we have. Instead of having, uh, at this point, six, seven providers, you'll have one single. Okay, and the other thing is, um, I am still, uh, the trash that's being, uh, we, we're still experiencing a large amount of litter throughout the city. And uh, I would love to work with the attorney to put in the uh, RFP solicitation on what companies are willing to do <coughs> some education, um, some education uh, 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 ca campaigns and sanitation campaigns uh, throughout the city uh, with residents and schools. And then also, I would like to see that. Uh, we, with us having so many sanitation providers in play, it's hard for us to control the market because, um, and you know, rightfully so, they want to make profit as well. And so I have been explaining to residents, until we can get to a single model where we have um, maybe one or two sanitation callers in place, it kind of takes out negotiating the power away. Would you agree to that, that with having so many of these uh, and I'm not sure if we're providing the quality of service that we said we were going to uh, provide because we still have a whole bunch of haulers, uh, you know, on the streets with us having about eight vendors. And so would you say that going to the single vendor model will limit the number of haulers on the street? It will also uh, give the city, ma the city manager an opportunity to negotiate uh, lower costs on behalf of residents. I, I believe it's, good, it's going to be a good opportunity for the city and uh, definitely having less trucks in different, uh, in different routes, it, it makes it easy for us and we have other funds as well to ensure that uh, the data that we present to you it is more accurate. Uh, perhaps these days uh, we have learned that we can uh, request from our providers to have a GIS system which allows that each uh, uh, dumpster has a, a tag on it. And uh, simultaneously, we can double check very quickly if all routes are being served. There will be no uh, errors on that because it will be a GIS system uh, uh, collected. Uh, uh, it will be a compromise between the city and, and them to ensure that that is one of the uh, items that they must provide if they are to provide as one uh, sanitary service. Okay, my last question is. If we were to go to the single model, um, I know the solicitation will need to be on the street approximately 30 days, right? That's correct. It has to be 30 days uh, uh, out, and then uh, if if we're going if we're going to move uh, forward, uh, uh, we just have to be realistic. Uh, the time that will take us uh, to get in place new uh, the new vendor, it will be. Uh, approximately in a good time 90 days from the day that we start advertising now okay so we advertise it has to be on the street 30 days by the time the procurement process complete you add another 60 days right that's right and then whoever the vendor is will have to have time to order the trash cans that, that's correct yes okay all right how about how, how long will that take I think um, I just I'm just thinking loud. M most of them have current uh, trash cans at this point. Uh -huh. There's not one single provider that is not aware of what the needs are. Okay. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Ma Mayor and Council. I would like to make for the record that Councilmember Khalid has joined the conference call. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's give you that. Um, I have a couple of questions, um, and I know you already know this simply because people with handy, with real handicaps, have contacted me, especially after they received the letters, and they were really, really concerned. What, what date was on the letter for them to comply? It, it was mailed out. If I'm not mistaken, August 19, then it was 20 working days after that for compliance. So there are, are people who are extremely elderly who are being taken care of by their neighbors. And then the last person that contacted me um, is uh, visually impaired. 
and people are taking care of her as well. And so I'm hoping that very soon we would um, have made a decision and whatever decision that we make, that there is an exemption for people who have documented um, special needs. So I, I just want to put that out there. Yes, ma'am. It's our intention to ensure that everything that we heard, that it, it's like those cases on ADA compliance and so on, we're going to send it uh, to our attorney and discuss it with her and ensure to see what uh, can be done for exceptions on, under the current sanitation ordinance. Okay, and then a couple of other things. Um, people are contacting me about the bulky trash day, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere online or anywhere. Are we going to have one before December? Uh, yes, ma'am. The second um, amnesty day to call is going to be in the fall. Uh, we are we're starting to meet and see um, with the support of all of our providers and others that work on the spring um, amnesty. Uh, we're going to come up with the best date. We got two dates in mind, but I prefer not to say it until I'm sure that the date is going to be uh, uh, published. But definitely we're going to make it available to you uh, at least 30 days ahead of time. And, and the last thing is that Jacobs made a presentation during our last meeting, and um, they didn't go through the entire uh, their entire presentation. But I did read that they were working uh, with Keep South Folks and Beautiful, and I was wondering exactly what they were doing with them. Uh, actually, you know, Jacobs represents us. And then we're going to be all over, but anything that Jacob does, it is on the representation of the city of South Fulton. So keeping the city of South Fulton beautiful is the efforts for them to come up with a new signage that perhaps we're going to put it out. So we're currently, uh, to say, designing what kind of signs we're going to use for keep uh, South Fulton beautiful, beautiful. And then you will choose one uh, four samples that we're going to be providing to you all. And then that's why we're going to be installing on, on, on some of the streets. And that's the extent of the and As well as, you know, communication mm -hmm. and, the, the, and the support that they provide for sanitation. They're providing support to us okay. on sanitation. You know, administering sanitation is it's a large, uh, just to uh, mention to you, 14,000 uh, residents and the number of calls that we receive, complaints and so on, it is a large. Yeah, and it was going to be impossible. To be honest with you, that the CEO South Photo was going to be able to take that under our uh, current staff that we have. So they are stamping that board? They, they have, yes, they have provided at that time the, a lot of support, administrative support, as well as our sanitation rep that we have under Jacobs. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, at the record, it's very good for me to come and join this. Uh, Mr. Baker. Thanks for your presentation. I do have uh, a couple questions. Uh, and, and I also uh, would like to ask the city manager to probably assist with giving part of the answer. As far as compliance, where are we currently with compliance? The, the current compliance is at 60 point Four percent, I believe, but over sixty percent compliance as the second quarter of two thousand nineteen. So that means after June. So from we still owe you uh, the last, the third quarter, which I expect that's going to be the higher jump of the compliance. Uh, my expectation will be at least a ten percent higher what we presented to you before. But the data is coming up to us uh, this third week of second third week of October. And we're going to meet with all the providers to ensure that that data is at, uh, at 100%, 95%, 98% accurate. So that, that sounds good to me. And I, I hear uh, Councilwoman Willis and her concerns. Uh, I parallel what she, you know, just said as far as having one provider. Initially, I thought that that's, that was the way to go. Uh, but we put our residents through the Ringo almost by going back and forth, sending these letters, trying to get them to find, you know, a service provider, making sure that they are in compliance with the list of providers that we've given them and uh, sending out almost threatening letters for them to 
uh, signed up with somebody, and it's almost like now if we switch it up again, it may be even more chaotic. Uh, and I don't know because we actually have charged them to work for themselves to a certain extent. Um, I don't quote the mayor often, but he did. He, he makes this comment about how if you wait on government to do everything for you, you're going to be in trouble. And I know my community and at least two other communities, uh, Cedar Grove community uh, it, as, as well, they've started making arrangements with these providers. And they have rates that are exceptionally low. And I don't know how uh, if or if you guys, as well as Mr. Kerr and uh, Mr. City Manager, will be able to get uh, prices as low as some of our residents that we've charged to do this already have. You know, you have some rates as low as $14 a month and some 17 and they're getting this bulk stuff that uh, Councilwoman Gillian spoke to. You have them getting that once a month. You have them getting yard trimmings included as well as um, uh, uh, like recycling, all of that included for you know uh, these exceptionally low rates. And if we're not able to provide that, if we decide to go to the model which I thought would be the best model for the city, having one vendor, they're going to be right back at us. So I guess um, the question to whoever can answer it is, how likely are we to get prices as low as the majority of uh, these people who we've charged to go out and, and try to get it for themselves? Uh, I, I have to side with you, uh, Council. Uh, I think the rates that you have now are very competitive throughout the metro. And, you know, it's an open market. It's kind of hard to believe that you're going to go much lower, because I haven't seen it below $17, $19 uh, r rates throughout the metro. So, uh, but again, if we did have just one service provider, is there a way to negotiate it at those starting points as low as our residents have already started, at least that way, given that there's so many people who aren't benefiting from, you know, those residents who have, you know, taken the initiative and, you know, now they're receiving these low rates. The majority of our citizens aren't getting those same low rates. So is there a way that we can start our process if we did go that model as low as our citizens have worked it out for themselves. So, so I think there are a couple of things to consider. Uh, yeah, I think there are a couple of things to consider. I think the first thing is, is that the procurement process does require a competitive uh, bid, which may uh, get you a lower price than the open market, but it's not guaranteed. You you don't know. The other uh, piece is, is that in, there are improvements that can be made to the open market model that we have that can also be incorporated into the procured model. So right now we don't have zones, which makes it a little difficult to implement the service as well. So there's an opportunity to implement zones within the current model. I think you could also look at the ordinance and include a requirement that eligible providers provide a senior discount. You could also make an improvement to where the infrastructure fee is provided or is remitted to the city off of gross collections at the end of the term, which might stop people from tacking it on top of the bill. So there are uh, opportunities that I think within the, the current model, especially with a 70% compliance rate, could help us improve it and make it easier and pass those savings on to the customer. But for simple simplicity and ease of operations, you can also incorporate uh, the, the zones and some of those requirements into a procurement. So it really comes back to what is the pleasure of the council. But I think it does not have to be one size fits all. 
You can adjust the current ordinance to include some of those requirements, and then it is going to take you, I think just listening to the timeline discussed by Council Member Willis and Mr. Valenzuela, we're looking at about a four or five month head start before you change the model. So it gives you a little bit of time to test and perfect a little bit and make it, make it easier now if you plan to transition down the line. And uh, I guess my next question was in reference to those questions that you had probably two slides back on your presentation. And you, you said that you would move with our direction, but I guess as a subject matter expert, I'm curious as to what concessions do you see being made for those questions? Like this on, can you go back to the first question? Yeah, yeah, that's back. Go back, go Four. forward. Four. Just the two. The, the slide with the, no, the next to the end. Yeah. It's, it's the slide with the questions with the people oh. having the bubbles in their mouth. Yes. Yeah, right. right. So you have so many of these questions. Like, uh, do you have a list of concessions, or it would be nice if you did, you know, as opposed to ask us that? Like, that's kind of something that we would expect to hear from, from you as far as what could be done for some of these if we did keep a current model or whatever. Like, it would be nice to know what you recommend as opposed to asking us because that's not of you. Absolutely. That, that is the intent. Uh, today's presentation is to share with you what we heard and not necessarily what we're recommending at this time how we would proceed. I had also, uh, uh, what we heard uh, posted on, on, the, on, on the screen we will come back to you and say, this is our, our recommendation to you all, and we, that will be coming for, that will be yes. for coming Can we do that? Can you just itemize it just like these questions? Because I yes. have every single one of these concerns, and uh, I know that you talked about the senior discount, and they scoff at that. I think many people just give a dollar, and they're still telling our residents that we're charging them at 5%, which is very misleading, mm -hmm. and they won't change it um, in their, they won't change it in, in their, their uh, well, messaging right. that goes out. Uh, so we kind of have to figure something out if we understand. So, so okay. would it be appropriate, uh, Mayor and Council, that if not at the, the next meeting would be too soon, but at the last meeting in October, because isn't that around the time we'll have the third quarter? So when we do the third quarter presentations, if we highlighted some recommended updates to the ordinance that might alleviate some of these issues, would that be an appropriate response that we could bring back to the council? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll commit to doing that. Before we go on to the Mrs. Brown and her hand up for her computer being fixed on the slide. Really quickly, one thing I did here that we haven't addressed, and it may be addressed with this proposed zone model, but there was a lot of concern about trash being out on different days of the week. So, you know, you go in any community, and you know, one subdivision is clear while it's another vendor. So, literally, you have trash out, could be every day. Um, and so, whatever that model, I want that to be taken into consideration whether we do it from a zoned approach where you know at least you know on Tuesday this zone is covered, Wednesday this zone, so that we don't kind of have that right. situation. That was one. Oh, yeah. And um, I think everybody has spoken to um, the senior discounts, but I also think we just need to also make sure that we are promoting recycling when we can. Um, you know sustainability is something I know a number of us are concerned about. So whatever that model, I, I do think recycling should be um, factored in. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, Councilman. Yes, so before we were, before we became full staff, I spent a lot of time on this sanitation ordinance and um, even got into the operations side because we didn't have a city manager. So I spent a lot of time in Fulton County with Mr. Spencer and uh, while one side of the city may be getting a rate of fourteen to seventeen dollars an hour, that is not the rate the entire city. I mean, among that is not the rate the entire city is getting. And yes, 
You may not can guarantee you, but I know for a fact that that can be done because the city was about to push that rate out to the entire, I mean, the county was about to push that rate out before we became a city. And so for me, I'm bringing back the ordinance. We can vote it up or we can vote it down. Um, our residents deserve to get sanitation at an affordable uh, rate. And that is what I'm pushing for. And I also don't like all of the trucks on the street. I also do not think we're getting quality service from all the vendors in the open market. And as far as Keep South Food and Beautiful goes, uh, Mr. Venezuela's, this is an affiliate of a federal organization, I mean, a, of a national organization, correct? So if we are not happy with Keep South Pool to Beautiful, which is a model that was transitioned to the city from the county, then it's nothing stopping us from creating Keep South City of South Pool to Beautiful. So um, I don't think we should, I think we should remain affiliated with the national organization. But I, what I have noticed with working with Keith South Fulton and Beautiful, they need more assistance. They don't have a lot of volunteers. They don't have consistency. And I have seen in other cities where their Keith Beautiful organizations have consistency. They have a lot of volunteers. Savannah is one. Um, city of Atlanta has a good Keith uh, City of Atlanta Beautiful organization. So we may need to consider creating our own Keith City of South Fulton Beautiful organization if we don't feel that we're getting the enough service out of the Keep South Pool to Beautiful organization. So, Councilman, just to provide clarity, because I think that was kind of lost in translation, Jacobs doesn't directly partner with the Keep South Fulton Beautiful group. They actually have a Keep South Fulton Clean campaign. I think there was <laughs> some confusion. It's not affiliated with that group. What they're doing is, I think they put up the signs. I think you took a photo with them and other council members. And it is an education campaign focused on uh, encouraging people to curb illegal dumping, throw their disposal of their trash appropriately, et cetera, et cetera. So it's definitely is not a slight on the Keep South Fulton beautiful organization. They've been great partners to the city and do a quality job. We have looked at ways to expand their capacity, but this is a slightly different piece and I think in the initial presentation uh, Jacobs was not aware of the Keep South Fulton beautiful organization and so they just used that as a placeholder for the name of the campaign. Okay. There is no official name of the campaign and what Mr. Valenzuela was referring to okay. is that they're going to look at four different let's call it campaign options and bring it back to the council under that Keep South Fulton clean modem and we'll select a name and have a very public cool process to help educate our residents. Okay, I just don't want us to, to uh, not have a relationship with the organization Keep Absolutely. South Fulton Beautiful. Um, it is an affiliate, it's a national organization. They have grants that we can eventually apply for, but I, I do see where they need more help uh, and, and we need to partner with them a little bit more. Um, but the open mar this open market, it's not working for me. I, to me, it takes uh, the negotiating powers away. Uh, we have certain vendors that are, I feel, price gouging residents. And you are not, some people are paying $25 a month and they're not getting bulk trash service put up. They're not getting tr uh, trees, uh, trim and pick up. They're not getting all the services. Well, when I know if we had a single vendor, everybody will be able to get that cost between 14 and 17 dollars a month and get all those services and i have some price sheets uh, for when i did when i was working closely with the process okay mr khalid um okay yeah i, I got a couple things one is i, I want to go back to something that uh well i think councilman baker and councilman boys were talking about it to price. Um, I understand that Waste Industries has been purchased by GFI. And one of the things that is common in the sanitation business, and actually in lots of businesses, is to offer really, really cheap service to increase your market share 
when you're trying to either go public or be purchased by someone else. So I have been warned by people familiar with these matters that it is quite possible that there'll be a rate increase in January, that one of the reasons that Waste Industries bid was so low was because they were increasing their market share, their market share in anticipation of selling themselves to other companies. So I I know that they might come in, you know, I think part of what happened last go around, that, that had something to do with what was going on last go around. And so I'm not sure that the prices will be the same that there will be anything like what we saw in the past because that dynamic is now gone. And, and, and even if we do nothing, uh, I will be interested to know, I, I'm told that those rate, uh, those rate uh, alerts or notifications come out sometime around November or December. Um, so I just think it would be interesting to see that. I uh, would be interested in working with you, Councilman Willis. I have a, a couple of things that I'm interested in. Um, seeing in our next RFP, should we do one? Uh, one is uh, the flat rate to include recycling, as Councilman Willis, uh, I mean, as Councilman Rahal was saying. Um, I think if it's just one flat rate and not all of these a la carte services, people will be more inclined to use them, which benefits us um, in the long run. I also would like to see some portion of points added in scoring. We've done a lot of work in our city to uh, raise wages and have like benefits for workers. And I want to make sure that the people that we're contracting with, not only in this contract, but in all contracts, that we are giving some sort of uh, points or consideration to companies who are willing to either match what we offer our own employees or at least try to come close, right? And so I think having some sort of point system, like no one might get a perfect 10 points for having the same thing that we have. But if they're, I think that that should just be, how, how companies treat their workers should be part of what we evaluate. Um, and I'm told that that is possible to do. Um, the citywide model, one of the sticking points, one of the major sticking points, and I think one of the reasons that we moved away from it last year was because we couldn't commit to who was going to pay for the service. So when we had, you know, a lot of the, the bids that we got were based on the idea that we would pay for the service up front and then get reimbursed. So I'm also told if that is not, if we're not willing to do that, the prices this year will also not be the same as last year because whether, whether we're collecting in-house because we're told, I guess we were told that uh, Mr. Ferdinand would not add that to our tax bills. Um, that was not that was not an option that we had. So if we're collecting in house, or whether the company is collecting in house, if we have thirty-five thousand rooftops, which was another issue that I heard from some vendors that we never gave them a clear number. Was it twenty-five thousand? Was it thirty-five thousand? Was it thirty-two thousand? But however many tens of thousands of rooftops that we have. If Mr. Ferdinand is not doing the collection, whoever else is doing it is going to have to hire people uh, to chase after that. <clears throat> and that is going to change what it costs to do the service. And lastly, I'll just say, um, I didn't hear any talk. I was listening on my way in from um, on YouTube. Because actually, the sound on the conference call is not that great. But the sound on YouTube is great. I did not hear you talk about commercial uh, sanitation collection. And I know that in several other cities, Fairburn and Hampton and some other cities, they actually uh, get millions in franchise fees from commercial, from the commercial side that they can use for their parks or keep South Fulton beautiful or like many of these other services. So I'm just wondering where are we in bidding out commercial services? Uh, with regards to commercial services, uh, we have listed under page eight of the presentation of where uh, our, our collections, and it's actually almost uh, half of what we receive from the residents and services. So we are also monitoring that side of the business, and we're going to bring more clarity once we meet with all our vendors. 
you know, one of the issues that we encounter is that there, there are multiple um, businesses doing not necessarily a single contract with a sanitation vendor. You have a complex and then there are four or six vendors occupying the same, the same uh, uh, vendor. HOAs, so you have a full number of HOAs under one contract through the HOA. Some are different. So all those things are going to be clean. And then it's, it's our hope to ensure that by uh, the third week of, by the second meeting on October as, uh, as a compromise, we will bring more clarity and to ensure that is residential is accurate, commercial is accurate, as well as the 35,000 rooftops that we uh, provided to you all. Okay, uh, Ms. Lee, you tagged that, but I will come back to you. Come back to you. Uh, here we go. Uh, Ms. Gary, you yeah. um, I want to go back to what I said initially, and that was in Jacob's presentation, I saw Keeps out for some beautiful. And I simply wanted to know what they did, and you explained it to me. You did say administrative support. I don't know what that means. But, but just put a pin in that for a second. Uh, and you said that they work under uh, a rep for Jacobs. But the city manager said, we're not doing anything like that because this is a campaign, and that's why it was in Jacobs' presentation. So that sounds like day and night. I don't understand. The, the reason that Jacobs put on a, a presentation that they haven't discussed it at length is because they have joined uh, that institution. But they haven't, they haven't joined by themselves, they have joined on behalf of the city of South Fulton. So we are part of that as well. And when you dis uh, the question with regards to uh, support, administrative support, yes, we have a, a sanitation coordinator under Jacob's contract because they are to provide those services to the city of South Fulton. Yes, we have one per uh, a person that's uh, just working on sanitation. <coughs> But when it came to those 14,000 uh, letters that we mailed out, uh, the bulk of the emails, phone calls, and uh, meetings, and so on, it was more than a job that one more, that was almost impossible one person to handle. Uh, actually, it was Jacobs, uh, their staff, uh, Seal South Fulton staff. It was all over, and yes, it was. And it was Keith Apple building too. I just, I'm just asking. That's trying to get clear. That that's understand a lot and keeps the CSL Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, one thing for me is something you can uh, probably probably too old to do that You know, I think all my colleagues are here to express everything that I would have expressed. I do go along with this. This will is on one hall. One of the same reasons why uh, Dr. Rob was talking about having all the garbage cans in the community and stuff that does not look good. Uh, but in, in, in line with, in tune with all of that, uh, I think this is one department, uh, Mr. Donald, mm -hmm. that's going to have to be truly have an extraordinary community customer service. Uh, I think Mr. Baker hit on it when he was talking about the goal. And the people, the concerns that uh, that they heard, we're going to have to be able to to get back with people with the answer to their questions, or just the Bible answer to their questions. Because I think a lot of my colleagues get these questions because they also hear nobody calls me back, or that somebody told me something that that came out not to be true. So I think uh, surrounding all this with extraordinary customer service will help us a lot. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, the next item is uh, hotel, hotel tax presentation by finance. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, we have asked a representative from the Georgia Department of uh, Community Affairs to help us understand what is uh, needed for us to do that is the on the hotel motel tax revenue that we receive 
what our areas, what is, is our duty. As you know, that last year we received, but we didn't uh, spend that money as it required that we need to spend in the year that he, we have received. So with us, we have Mr. Jackson Lilly from Georgia Department of Community Affairs to make a presentation on hotel motel revenues. Good evening, Council. Um, there's going to be a lot of information in this presentation. I'm going to move through it fairly quickly and try to focus on the specific points that uh, you had mentioned about spending the same fiscal year and some of the um, restrictions on recipients of the uh, promotional funds. So to start out with that, the only section um, for any uh, hotel motel receipt to receive, there's going to be three major items on top of the base rate. Two of those are remitted directly to the Department of Revenue and are not concerned with any of these restrictions that we're talking about today. This is only in regards to the 8% excise tax that the city of South Fulton adopted recently. So though it's been around since 1975, the most important topics here are going to be, in 2008, it was um, restricted down to three authorization paragraphs. And the city of South Fulton is under 481351B, and that's the 8%, which comes with a specific set of breakdowns as far as which of that money goes to promotional activities, which of it goes to capital projects, and which of that money is unrestricted for the general fund. And because the city of South Fulton has already gone through this process, you already know that for the 8% tax, anywhere from the 6 to 8% tax, you have to go to the General Assembly. And now that we have received the most recent copy of the ordinance, you're completely up to date with the demands for adopting a 51B 8% tax. Our role, one thing we always say is, one, we're not an auditing and enforcement agency, so we're here to answer any questions that you have. Um, we're not here for any gotcha man. We're simply, simply provide educational programs, and we're also a repository for all of your ordinances, all your reporting information, um, and as well, we do convene the performance <coughs> review board, which I'll talk more about at the close of the presentation. But as we keep track of all the uh, keep track of all the ordinances and all the reporting figures, should there be a complaint raised against any expenditures for the hotel motel restricted portion, we're the ones to investigate and make that presentation. So as far as discussing your jurisdiction, hotel motel tax, like I said. We can't offer legal directives, and we're not an enforcement agency, but we can help with any sort of questions about the nuts and bolts of the tax. Um, the first thing we're often going to say is consult your city attorney. Most of the spending restrictions are going to be a local decision, and as we don't offer legal directives, we usually defer to that. The other thing we always mention is to maintain a stakeholder agreement with your DMO, whichever the 501c6 organization, whether that be a Chamber of Commerce or a Commission of Visitors Bureau, is receiving the, it's called TCT portion of the restricted funds, which I'm going to break down here briefly. But beyond a formal MOU, which is very key to have with your DMO, to maintain an open line of contact as far as where those promotional funds are allocated towards and what specific projects they're promoting. So these are the mechanics of the restricted spending. The first category of restricted spending is tourism, conventions, and trade shows. That's TCT. So this is defined uh, as planning, conducting, or participating in programs of information and publicity designed to attract or advertise tourism, conventions, and trade shows. They don't provide any explicit examples of that. So that's why we uh, defer to the judgment of the city attorney, city attorney who is ultimately the one making final decisions on that. One key thing about the TCT promotional activities is it must be expended by a destination marketing organization. So that's going to be a 501c6 organization, most frequently convention at visitors bureaus, chamber of commerces, some of the business leagues, um, but it is a private nonprofit group with IRS status 501c6. So they are the only entity that can expend the TCT portion, and I'll go over what proportion of your hotel motel tax revenue is allocated towards TCT, but as well as all the restricted portions of the revenue, that TCT money must be spent or allocated in the year that it was collected. So that's a commonality between all the authorization paragraphs, including uh, the City of South Fulton's 481351B. 
So one question we receive frequently as far as eligible organizations go are DEAs or Main Street organizations. Um, DEAs, tourism authorities, or other local authorities cannot receive these promotional restricted funds. They're inherently public entities. They're part of the local government, um, and they do not have that 501c6 status. Main Streets are a little more complicated. Um, if the city of South Fulton has a Main Street program, if they have the 501c6 status, they are an eligible recipient. If they have 501c4, 501c3, they would not be. If they're a Department of City Government, again, it is a public entity. So if you have an organization similar to that, then you would be interested in looking at that's a conversation that we can have um, on that eligibility. This just goes a little bit more into the difference between 501c3 and c6. Frequently, there's an organization that does a lot of the same duties as a Chamber of Commerce or a Commission of Visitors Bureau, but the key aspect to this is that it has that 501c6 tax status. So how can the PCT funds be spent? Like I said, we don't have tangible examples that are written in the code, but generally think promotion, community-wide tourism, radio and television commercials. Again, we always have a disclaimer. It's the city attorney that's making this final decision if there's a, a project or an expenditure that you're unsure about. But one thing that we do know is it can be the event itself. So we get a question frequently, can we put on fireworks, uh, concerts, etc.? If it is the event, then it's not an eligible uh, expenditure for the TCT promotional funds. There are some limited alternative, uh, limited alternative uh, entities that are eligible to receive the TCT. Those are going to include state authorities. Um, this is less frequently the case, so if you have more questions about that, definitely you can reach out to PCA. Um, the other section of restricted spending, which is um, a portion of the City of South Fulton's tax of 8% is TPD. That's going to be your capital projects expenditures, defined as creation or expansion of physical attractions which are available and open to the public and which improve destination field of visitors, support visitors' experience, and are used by visitors. This can be spent directly by the local government, though it has the same restriction that it should be spent or allocated the year that it was collected, the same fiscal year. Um, and they do provide several different, several different examples of eligible expenditures. This is not an exhaustive list. If there are certain projects that the city wants to fund, again, consult your city attorney. You can check and see if it's one of the things mentioned here. They do provide you know, several explicit examples, sports stadiums, information centers, fishing preserves, just to name a few. So as far as restricted spending goes, with each percentage that you adopt, it's going to change a little bit. I originally included the 5%, which is before adopting the 8%, which is what the city of South Fulton was uh, taxing at. And as with all authorization paragraphs, the first three pennies are unrestricted. That's, in this case, 60% of revenue that can be allocated to the general fund for any purpose. We don't need to hear about it, or it doesn't need to be reported to us. That is entirely separate of any of the other uh, restrictions that's spoken about today. Um, so I'll focus mostly on the current authorization paragraph for South Fulton, that's the 8%. So again, we have the three pennies, which are unrestricted for the general fund. Um, we have three and a half pennies, or 43.75%, that must be allocated towards uh, or to a DMO or a 501c6 organization for promotional activities. And that leaves the 18.75 or a penny and a half for TPD, those are your capital projects, and that can be spent by, spent by the local government itself. And as I said before, those two categories, all restricted expenditures, um, <coughs> must be spent in the year that it's been collected, the fiscal year. As far as after the fiscal year goes, um, like I said, we aren't an auditing agency, but we do collect um, forms on all the restricted expenditures. So we work with your um, tax administrators to just keep keep a running track if anything is ever, we receive any questions, any complaint or anything, we verify that we have the most current ordinance that matches up with um, matches up with the rate that the city is taxing at. And this is just some examples of the reporting requirements. Um, this form is filled out by your DMO, so when the city selects a DMO to receive this portion of the restricted funds, they will be submitting um, this Excel file, uh, breaking down their expenditures. We are not looking at this for uh, 
compliance necessarily. We're just a repository for all the records that are restricted to expenditures. And the last thing that we do is we facilitate the hotel motel complaint section. So this, these complaints can be filed by private citizens, some within the government, by a hotel lodging association. Um, it can deal with funds not being spent. It can deal with uh, entity not being eligible to receive funds. It can deal with a project that someone feels should not be funded by hotel motel funds. We do not receive these incredibly often, but we are the agency that's tasked with uh, monitoring that. So, for time. I'll leave it there. Final tips and suggestions. Um, restricted spending is always percentage based. Reach out to us if you're unsure about anything and have my contact information up there. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Goodman. Uh, we're actually um, in receipt of an art center. All right. I'm wondering can TPD funds, we have no idea like, what kind of maintenance it might be. Can TPD funds be used to on maintenance for that facility? So the TPD funds can be used for maintenance or the construction of facilities. Um, so ultimately, as people tire of hearing us say, most of those decisions are gonna be one for the city attorney and the government itself. Um, but if it fits that uh, definition that we gave for TPD, the creation or expansion of, uh, of projects that promote tourism in the area and attract visitors, um, that doesn't quote it exactly, but the maintenance of an art center, like I said, it would be a local decision, but it sounds like it could fit into that category. Before, before I get all excited, I just do, I want to ask our city manager and uh, CFO slash treasurer, have we already made plans for this year, whatever we have currently? Yes. So the plan has been made for general fund, and the plan has also been made that whatever restricted money is, uh, to transfer it out, we're going to write the check that is going out to support the budget that was presented by the economic development supported by, um, introduced by the Councilman Willis. So we have two, both of them, yes. So the money for 2019 and the projected money for 2020 is already... 2020, we can't talk that one, you see. We are talking about whatever remained in 18 and 19. Okay, so the budget that we just passed for 2020 did not include any expenditures of anticipated revenues of hotel motel tax. So our focus now is to to use the money that is in our custody. The 2020 that one is uh, different. The budget that was presented was the, the money that is available for 2019 and 2018. So we spend that one. 2020 will be a completely different project. Uh, Mr. City Manager, is there, is, is there any money in that we have, there's projected, I, I'm, I'm assuming there's a projection for what we're there going to get in 2020. Yes. Have we decided how we're going to spend that money? So not fully. I'll That's allow 240000 is projection of what we're going to, but there is no budget. Hopefully it's the budget that the economic development they put in place. That one may be a continuation of that, but we don't have details expenses on the, the 240 projection for 2020. Okay. Okay. Let's go. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. That ends today's uh, work session agenda. How many? I make a motion that we need to be able to do it. Yeah, four we'll personnel or we'll all this. Okay. Oh, you're going to do personnel later on? Or do we do that one? Can we do food or something? And don't move ahead. Personnel litigation and real estate. I make a motion that we um, adjourn for executive session to discuss real estate, personnel, and litigation. Thank you. Probably move the second in discussion. All of those in favor? Your motion needs to be recessed. Recess. I said adjourn for executive session, so recess. I make a motion that we uh, recess for executive session to discuss real estate personnel and litigation. Is that correct? Is that a good motion? Yes. Okay. You second? You second to it. You probably move the second in discussion. All of those in favor? 
Uh, it's uh, Baker and uh, Baker, yeah, Bill Yard, and uh, Willis. Did you get the vote count? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm 